are. <laughs> so, I don't think anybody's going to be on live. But, okay. So, theoretically, this is close enough and not so noisy. We can actually hear you. So, I was reading your blog a little bit, and you had recommendations. What was that called, your blog? your entry. 16 recommendations for uh, occupations. Occupations or like plural? Did you say blockupations or occup occupations? Occupations. So, um, so you had 16 recommendations for multiple occupations, so it was general. So um, now I I named just one I couldn't remember and I didn't uh, I didn't call it up like I was going to I was going to refresh but you are Josh Maurice M A U R I C E one word on Twitter and the first thing that you see under your name is these two blogs your Blogspot and your li uh, Live Journal this was your Blogspot. That I was looking at, but it, is it on both? Okay. So the blog spot is where I was, and I saw this, and I really liked it. So, tell me some of your recommendations. And it's still relevant. Oh, well, actually, first of all, when did you write it? Figuring we were going to be out of there? Or were we already out? I can't remember. I thought it was the 12th. The morning of the 13th. So, were we out or going to be out, known to be out when you wrote this? Uh, yeah. So, the Portland occupation was shut down this week. So, now what's interesting to me about the timing is you were talking about an evolution of what is needed after you get a camp. After you have a camp, what is needed compared to what we had. So you were theorizing if you still had a camp or for those people who do have a camp, and, and what were those changes, those suggestions? Actually, do you, can you tell me all 16? Because I just saw you do the one hen, two ducks thing. If anybody hasn't seen that one hen video on this Ustream visual TV, you should watch that. Because I, actually, I just occurred to me that maybe you know all 16. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, showers, laundry. Outside the tents, and enough tents for everybody who wants to have one, enough space. Cameras available for inside the tents, so you can have privacy or not. Like, you mean like real world situations if you wanted? Like, you know what I mean, MTV, uh, Big Brother, real world. Are you talking about having sure. cameras in? Sure, for that, yeah. For that purpose? Or cameras for security, what do you mean? Why would you have cameras inside tents? You just said some of the cameras will be inside tents. Uh -huh. For anyone who would like to do that. But 
why would they? That was the question. Why would they? Would you want one if you had a tent? Mm -hmm. actually uh, what they've been spraying on people. I don't know if that one is just water. That one looks different, but we got to watch that because they will intentionally spray people. Hey, we have a viewer or multiple. Don't know. Anyway, I don't have the chat on. I should turn it on. Now I have the chat on. If we hear that uh, sprayer, we will get back at the camera. Oh, just so you know, I'm not feeling obligated to be over there right now because we have a ton of people awake. I can't really see. Yeah, there's people right now awake, so safety is taken care of, which leaves us free. Okay. So, let's see. Where was I? I was over here. Anyway. Okay. I'm eating lettuce out of a pouch because I can't find our forks. So, this is like, pretend it's chips and dip, only boring. Actually, it's quite good. You're freezing, huh? You were about to leave and then bother me with this. But, okay. More recommendations for camp. still recommend these at this time as cheapers. Okay. Well, you talked about the decision making body and so forth. Well, close I've heard other people say uh like to move away from proposal based. have instead a proposal based meeting structure. see myself just doing that because if you had that every time it would just be you know and involving more voices you know but but the point of it would be to just get coordination on doing autonomous actions or doing uh, group actions you know and, and creating and that would be the point the camp being uh, some of its parts, all the, the actions people are taking. So, you know, we are what we do, right? So that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. But uh, we have the other meeting style of Spokes Council. Anything uh, that you remember was very interesting 
to you? Oh, you sure do have nose. I can't stand watching you freeze like this. Totally shaking. Do you need some food? I have some food. There is hot water. Should we go get some? I'll get you some. Yeah, do you want coffee, tea, hot water? Okay. Yeah. So the coffee is, uh, you know, two parts coffee, one part hot water, but. If you don't mind it thinner, you can make it hotter because the hot water is hotter than the coffee stock. So I'll wait for you. I'm going to look at your notes though. Well, you took names of people who were here. So these are the things that people wanted to talk about. I guess that's how uh, movement building starts, at least the last time I went. You know, everybody had things on their mind and then we kind of get consensus about what we're going to spend the time on and in what format. Josh, about uh, the idea of this community activity of, of, you know, whether or not we want to keep these structures. Oh. Slow. I need to move when I hear that. Hopefully, we will not be watching people getting sprayed with pesticide, but that has happened. So we need to get that on film. Make note of the license plate and the time. can't be certain that it's pesticide, but people have gotten sick, and uh, Mo actually looked up this company uh, brand on the side of the tank, and that's what's in there. So even if they were spraying water out of that tank, those, those tanks contain pesticide. And there's multiple wet sprays, I believe. There's probably straight up water 
and they have the little stream that's aimed right at the curb, right at the ground at the curb. I think that might be pesticide. And they're intentionally spraying the people. I've seen that for sure. So whether it's water or pesticide, it's freaking mean. But we'll find out if it's criminal. So it looks like you guys talked about whether or not to engage cops in conversation on duty, off duty, whether we're being nonviolent means that we're buddy buddy and engage like dialogue and so forth. Is that is that something that you were talking about? Not me personally. <laughs> okay, well I mean as a group. So how'd that go? He has a blog, you actually wrote that down, right? Is that his that's on there? And that would be something like um, if, if you spend all of your day harassing people over small things versus catching a burglar, this would be this would be uh, logs. Uh, you'd be given a score. What is this? <laughs> you said commoditizing. I was I was thinking of quantifying. But what do you mean commoditizing? But this general conversation was pleasant, it was calm, even though we're talking about how we deal with police officers, which is not usually a calm conversation. So, what about, what about uh, at Movement Building, have you ever been there where it's been real heated?
cited, I guess. That seems like kind of the same conversation about antagonizing. I mean, I've read the word antagonizing. I mean, we know that Paul, the inception of the pig roast was his May 1st being beaten by a cop, hit the back. He just told us that. Right here at the city hall, Paul just told us that. At the Circle E. Shame on you. regularly right after the march that I, not march, but rally, and, and it became a march for the non-GMO thing, label it, label GMOs, which was October 16th, 
So I was a couple of weeks late to be there on a regular basis. I couldn't be because I was doing my promotion. I was curious as I was. I was invited. It would have been great. But anyway, I couldn't. So everybody was already established. You know, there was this process. And it was kind of a rude awakening to go to the GA and do something out of order, kind of, you know, publicly humiliated right there. Have people come up and say that was wrong, and I just wanted to hide because I didn't want to have the discussion about how somebody shouldn't have called me out for doing something or <laughs> whatever. It's not a, it wasn't a welcoming feeling. And then uh, I think uh, by the end of October, early November, that's when instead of them and those guys, it was us. For me, that was about when it happened. And then that sometime they were talking about becoming a nonprofit, and going to vote on it. There weren't that many people there, and I was really against it. I think it was the, the talk about the nonprofit. Maybe I have my facts wrong, but there was a talk about something that I just didn't think was right. I was upset, so I went screaming through the camp to try to get people to come to the GA because we didn't have a lot of representation. It seemed like people weren't coming. Not a lot of voices, and uh, I, I ran into Mike Blue here. And he goes, I love you to death, Mary, but this camp is not run by the General Assembly. It's run by gangs. There's, and I was like, what do you mean gang? And he's like, there, there's a media gang and there's a food gang. And it's <laughs> and a gang, media coalition gang. Anyway, since then, people have been saying, oh, that sounds like my... <laughs> but I have to agree now. I would say that the work is done by people who just decide to do something together and then they do it. And then it doesn't really have a lot to do with Occupy officially endorses this march or this whatever on the website. The camp business is what. Uh,
bit more bite sized, like having showers. What about what other things were on there on the blog article for suggestions that might be I don't know, a little bit larger items like the decision making body and so forth. Since we have an occupation, occupancy, we don't need to be doing marches. We should be. I read that, so. It made, it made more sense to do marches if we don't have. Why not do marches if you have a camp? Why not do marches if you have a camp? I guess not. Oh, yeah. It's nice. I'm not clear on why do marches. <laughs> I can see a couple of reasons to do them. Yeah. Like NTAA, if we have to bang a drum and say, hey, hello, or Alec, hello, Alec, you guys, wake up, everybody, you know, attention, this is happening. But those are exceptions for me. Yeah, I was listening to these kind of very off the top of my head and you know, on hectic days right after this eviction, and so I wanted to get these ideas out there and get my full form. But still, the philosophy of marches. I mean, it's not a given. The marches would be. I mean, I know some people. Very passionate in the marches. Some people say that that's all of them. Transky was quite the march. Well, the march to march around and march around and march around and then run and take a park, that obviously has a reason. <laughs> Misdirection. Opportunity to all show up in one place and then still surprise everyone where we 
Still, I mean, I, nevertheless, despite the fact that we did have uh, a lot of attention called to Alec, none of the credit went to Occupy Portland, Occupy Anywhere at all. Every single organization that has been sending email lists about Alec told their distribution list. We did it. We, we, as, let's say for example, change.org or uh, Democracy Now, or, you know, some, some email distribution list with petitions said, you know, and I'm just giving those two as an example of the kind of uh, nonprofit or what that might say might have called attention to Alec, not necessarily those two. And they would say things like, uh, we did it, our members, because they need the money, they need the donations, so they need to show what they've done, and they were part of it, but when you read in the paper you know, about Alec, and, and you're not seeing that Occupy had given a lot of March and, and, and I, I felt that we were in front of that conversation there, so.
still, whether or not we're credited or not, those have an effect to, to raise awareness. But marches where you have 100 people walking around, and then ultimately going into the nighttime and having conflicts with police, with a few individuals up front. There's a tactic there that some people believe in and they don't get it personally. Have you ever been arrested? I mean, with the Occupy movement, I'm sure you all personally. But you would avoid it if possible. Well, you don't go to the marches. So there, that helps. <laughs> Never been beaten by a baton to what was that Occupy event. I can't go to marches. I'm here. And when I'm not here, I'm sleeping or I'm, you know, that playing catch up with other life stuff. So all my Occupy time is pretty much here. Because it's a chunk. I mean, I gotta. From 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 10 or 11 a.m. every other day that. Plus prep. There's a lot of prep. Probably with me, there's more prep than there needs to be because I get this OCD thing going on. Where I can't get out of the house. I don't know. It's like, did I pack my screwdriver? Why do I need a screwdriver? I don't know, but I might. It's terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, it limits, and I don't know what's going on. And, like, I wouldn't know what. Uh, spokes council or what uh, movement building was like since the last time I went, which was months ago. Except I can kind of find out by asking people. I couldn't. I try. I did not. No. No. I. Okay. So. One of the reasons I latched onto the article about you know, the occupation suggestion is because I could understand it. And I don't know if maybe I have Twitter brain and I can't think past you know 31 characters or however many, but let's do a little bit. Whatever. I. I still. Uh, that was pretty heady. The blog starts out with a kick. And, and no, your al algorithm did not. If, if I couldn't understand the discussion about algorithms, I, I don't know. Talking about... But there was... You talked about uses. The only thing I'd ever heard before was visually representing ideas and connections to each other without going through the kind of energy sink of typing and talking.
there's more to it. Algorithm Alpha. What's Algorithm Alpha? From the top. addresses you assume probably points to another I guess I'm missing something really basic about this. What is it that you're trying to share from person to person that has to do with this algorithm? Because you were talking about sharing communication between people, right? Why would, if I'm communicating with you, instead of... What is it that I would be communicating? generated list of URLs. And how did that generate? What is the point? Okay, so we are all communicating with just pictures. It's all you see and it's all you use to What are these URLs? What's on them? Are they pictures? Um, maybe. Yes, it could be. It could be like a camera back on your computer screen. I'm 
meant graphical. When you were talking about graphical communication as opposed to with words. And so I was trying to go from how you have lists and lists of, you know, or nested lists of, you know, the URLs and automatic generation based on an algorithm. Where does that go from URLs? Because when I say URL, I think, okay, this could be Netflix, this could be Blogspot, this could be, what is that URL? Are you talking about a specific kind? Are you talking about something that has, I mean, besides a, a URL that pertains to another list, because that's, I mean, like I said, I'm not even aware of mm -hmm. So, where does it go from there to a faster communication between people with, without having to have words? I don't understand. This is also coming after a conversation about, about a world where you don't translate through words. And there's a quiet person who I'm trying to solicit information from, and it's difficult, who writes very well, long sentences, and many of them also feels like visually it would be much more free-flowing. I don't know if you guys have had this experience, but I used to do chat on Yahoo uh, with serious topics and have in-depth conversations and find myself able to say things that I couldn't say out loud because my censorship was much higher, for better or worse. Uh, when I was speaking. And it actually interfered with my thought process. There's also the fact that when we read, we read much slower until we learn how to shake the habit of pronouncing everything in our mind. It's, it's not necessary for comprehension to have that, you know, your tongue and your lips slightly move. I've tried to read faster by eliminating that and just look and 
not say it in my mind. And it's difficult, but it is faster. So imagine if we were communicating all over the world with each other, and we could make each other understand complex ideas and new ways of thinking without words. But I have no idea what algorithm alpha has to do with any of it. I still can't get it. It comes back with the copy. I, and I also don't know how much silence. I don't want to interrupt. I don't like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said he's going to think about it. And I'm going to try to shut up and see what happens. But it is deadly thick air. I really want to know. I want to show you guys something. This is very funny. When I had to charge the phone, oh shoot. I had to charge my phone. This is how I did it. I put my phone in this shoe. Cord. And I wrapped it. I wrapped this and used this and some other lock and a belt. A belt that has metal rings. And I looped it on the circle E. Hey! It's a naked night joke! Hi. I've got the Ed McMahon set up. What do you mean? Well, Josh, is, we're in the middle of an interview. We've had a little break to talk about him while he's gone. <laughs> about how quiet he is. He knows this. Um, but he's sitting here, and mm -hmm. I'm asking him questions. And I just realized, this looks like, does this look like a TV show? Like this is, we, you know what? Someday there will be an Occupy uh, hosted show somewhere and, and he'll be recreating it and they'll make a bus stop. Well, I'm just passing through. So. Are you? Well, say hi. Here. Hi, camera. Hi. Hi. Look! Hi, it's that camera. guy! Um. Yeah, I'm just going to house for the Oh, you're a silhouette now. Oh, there we are. Nice. <laughs> you don't have a TV like set up how you had it just a minute ago. Yeah. Like you were a professional interview or something. Yeah, isn't that funny? It was great. Now it's empty. But anyway, give me a hug. Right. Nice have a good night. Or morning. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to frame us again. Oh, really? Okay. Thanks for the coffee. If you want to sit back down in the guest chair, and then I'll do a Stephen Colbert and, and like make a big deal of my sitting down. You seen the Colbert Report? He, he has his guest already seated, and then he does the big walk around with the American flag and the... like. <laughs> The guest is really just there to offset, like me talking too much. Okay. All right. Okay. So you explain <laughs> to them. There's people there. Uh, to the list of network addresses, an automatically generated links.
Bloodless Ice Hockey Club. <laughs> Is this recursive? Are these websites things that maybe I typed up like my There's animal welfare, there's homemade, different philosophies, and description, and we're trying to communicate our pizza world to each other. Is that, is that what this is really about, is communicating to each other? I mean, this is the, the purpose of, of your improved internet, as I understood, was to take away the sluggishness. I was talking to the camera about how uh, when you read, you pronounce things in your mind, and that is holding you back. Mm -hmm. You can read faster if you learn to learn what is being said without sounding out the words in your mind. And you told me that this constant blabbing, is what you said, is slowing our communication. Slowing our progress.
was talking about the sluggishness, communication, lag, and progress that we could be making. Okay, so let's say we could all just, well, what if, okay, let's take it one step further. Let's say beyond your algorithm, we could just think at each other. And then we have no text whatsoever. We just have a feeling, an impression, an idea. And I'm not translating into words at all. I'm just, I'm just sending it over from mind to mind, and, and you can pick it up as we have ESP. This is, you're trying to get closer to that, it sounds like. For the purpose of evolving faster solutions and more natural ways of doing things. And your group on bopdxga.org is, or pdxga.org, is called uh, 2012 Novelty Acceleration. Novelty of 2012. Accelerating that. Hi guys. Mm. Hi Reggie. You want to say hi? Uh, sure. The camera shy. If I trained the camera on you, would you be offended? Hmm? Would you be offended if I trained the camera on you? And I will not. I just thought it'd be. That's what this whole thing this morning at City Hall is going to be about. Spy cameras, but please. I mean this thing, this whole thing. At 8 30 is gonna be a rally in the city hall. At 9 30 or 9 inside the council chambers there's gonna be a discussion by the mayor and council members on how to enact it. I don't think it's a city ordinance but the police chief wants to enable all video cameras to be tapped to be to spy on the citizens of the city. Ah, so we're gonna be in New London. Yeah, so basically every cop that has a cell phone will be able to, be able to spy on any citizen whenever they want, however they please, 24 hours a day. Which is a super invasion of our not only a personal but our constitutional right to privacy. Because your option is if you want privacy to not be in public. And even then, we don't have personal privacy. So, constitutional right to privacy is going to be gone with this. And we're having a rally? Yeah, 8.30 to protest the uh, spying on citizens of Portland. And what good would that do? Because we're having a rally first, and then we're all going to go into council chambers and protest the action. Are you going to filibuster it? Are you going to let them have that discussion? Or no, we're going to disrupt their discussion, not have it at all. Won't Maybe. they just do it then? Ah, not if enough citizens show up and protest and say, hell no. Yeah. Good. Because I, I don't think this is the kind of thing we can just get up and do your two minutes input and then okay but whatever you decide mayor and councilman and yeah that's not okay right on I don't know. see this is this is this is my only way of getting information <laughs> oh and the other thing on the Ask agenda is at, well, the in this building at 10 a.m on the second floor auditorium they want to raise everyone's water rates 10 percent this is Portland building. Um, that blue building. So, I believe so. Yeah. But it might be here in council. I'm not sure. I okay. think it's on the council agenda. So. Oh, okay. So, it's also. Okay. So, so, not only do they want to spy on the citizens, but they want to jack everyone's water rates up 10%. Right. Meanwhile, we're going to sell it over to Nestle and Gorge. And, well, well, the actually, reason why they want to jack their water selling, rates up is they want to cap the reservoirs. You know, all the former reservoirs are open. They want to put caps on them. And they wanted to put cell towers and stuff on them. Something like that, yeah. Why do they want to put caps on them? The EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, deemed and declared that having open reservoirs in a major metropolitan area like Portland was 
is that makes water quality not safe. But our water quality is fantastic. Fine. Yeah, it's the best in the country. But so they want to fuck it up for us. This is another, another one of those one size fits all. Mm -hmm. That yeah. the, the feds are trying to impose on the city of Portland. Right. Great. Okay. There's more stuff that makes me angry. Mm -hmm. Here's something about Occupy I want to say. People are like, oh, you're all over the place. The thing is, is that we're all here to learn. And by having all of these myriad of different protests, we basically become an information sharing, you know, an awareness. Everyone is teaching each other about our issues and we're finding out together so that nothing in this darn city is taking place without the attention of those people here who show up every day and communicate with one another mm -hmm. or if they don't show up in person they're on those google groups or they're you know they're they're somehow netted into this occupy network it would it would be like people who are aware and give a damn and talk about it with each other so if you don't like the fact that occupy has like a zillion different focuses or, or i guess the focus is justice and the means is to involve one another mm -hmm. and keep learning what the hell is going on. Yeah. And so every time somebody says to me, oh, Occupy should do this or that, I'm mean, like, screw you, you Don't should. Why am I fighting for your freedom? Why am I fighting for your planet? Like, you know, you should be here. Oh, sure. I don't have any tolerance for people when they tell me that I should fight their battle for them better. You know, I, I'm not saving your place in line. You have to come. So anyway, but on the other hand, it gets very overwhelming because there's so much stuff going on that's so criminal, so fast, so tragic that We're railroading all this shit in overnight. Mm -hmm. So you know how we deal with it? We pick a job in that and then we do it. That's the only way to deal. One issue at a time. As many issues as you can do, but you know that you want but you do your work. The only way out is through. You have to actually just work at it. Be aware of everything, but then pick something and just do it because mm -hmm. that's the best thing you can do. But every time we do something together, we're also talking about the other, you know, so the awareness is there, even if we're not individually working on every single task, we're still aware of it mm -hmm. and we can still support one another, you know. So I, I, I don't know, it's stronger together for sure, for sure, even if I don't agree with every single cause movement, I definitely agree with the idea of here's a pool of concerned citizens sure. that should encompass all of everyone, mm -hmm. hopefully will. Anyway, thanks for letting me know that yeah. chilling fact about mm. what's going on tomorrow. Everybody should come down. You should turn, if you're watching this live, you should turn that off and go to bed so you can get here <laughs> in the morning. Five hours. So I will be here for that. Uh, it's going to create a nightmare from my standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to pack things away and go home. And, you know, Cindy, I guess, told people that this whole thing had to be shut down. We wouldn't be here anymore or something. But I think she was just threatening. I think she was saying, reality check, you shouldn't have food. But I'll show her the sign inside the vigil. It says, please don't leave food here. So she understands that, look, something got left in there we didn't know about, but sorry. It wasn't. We're not trying to do that. Well, June 1st is our six month anniversary. I know. I was here on the first day with Colonel. Yeah, you were. Remember Colonel? <laughs> yes, like talking. <Dr. laughs> yeah. Did anyone tell him? Oh God, I would hope so. He he started the he organized the whole thing. Yeah, and he spent every day out here. He and 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 Andrea. Yeah, the general. Yes, so I know that he is aware. But there have been events that have taken place here that nobody told him about. He's like, why didn't anybody tell me? It's like, well, why weren't you here? But that was before. Now, now he can't be here. 
so you know we need to reach out to him. And I'm sure he's. I mean, I, I just saw his post on Twitter about something recently. Oh, about his court. Really? He's going to court. For. The pallet action. Hmm. So situation, as I read it, I went on Twitter to Colonel Moses. I think that's his mm -hmm. name on Twitter, right? So check out his Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we at the vigil are OCCU PDX mm -hmm. number four underscore PV, I think for Portland Vigil. Yeah. Um, so OCCUPDX four underscore PV um, on Twitter. And that's where I saw Colonel Moses post and that's a Facebook link for an event. And I believe it is today. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe hmm. it was already earlier today. I, Excuse me, I must I'll find out. Anyway, go check it out. Mm -hmm. This is court thing, is there? And he explains that probably nothing will happen because they're stonewalling. Mm. Okay. So, all right, ready? We'll do. Thanks for everything. Sure. So we were at the point of what pizza world would look like if we were just communicating about pizza, because that's our whole world. I was I was trying to figure out how we would, you know, if, if we were using ESP, you know, or or something close to it, which would be short shortcutting through all the translating our thoughts into English language or other languages and back into thoughts. You know, that's a maybe an unnecessary step. And you know, if we had ESP we could just mind to mind, but second to that might be visual. And if I'm gonna convey a lot of information to you, like I just envisioned a world where there wasn't just cheese on pizza, because that's all we know in our world. We've been talking about you know, jack cheese and mozzarella cheese you know, for a long, long time. And then suddenly I show you this picture and it's like pieces of ham. <laughs> but <laughs> what would the, al can you tell me what the algorithm would be doing for Pizza World. Um, Tell me what algorithm alpha does in any way that you want. <laughs> we leave Pizza World, although I love it. talking about moving data between us. Are you talking about ideas? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, why do you say, why do you say we're trying to move bits of data around to one another? What are you talking about?
To where? To other people, to a website, to email. You're going to be navigating through some kind of space, right? Four dimensional. navigating a four dimensional space. I'm navigating online because I'm seeing things like it was real space. I'm noticing coming to different places like upon other people's ideas or something that they built, cyber, whatever. Is that what I think that, that maybe that's a missing link that I didn't I'm thinking of the internet as I look at a website and I read something and then I blog or play a game or something like that. You're talking about possibly a more, more living experience of being online than reading text. You described it as four dimensional, so. What are you, you can doing? imagine that, right? Sort of, uh, Starting to. Like TV, but interactive. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's helping me. So so basically, the internet that that I'm thinking of is not really the internet that we're we're talking about. You're talking about something that almost is already using the technology that you want when you describe it. Because it's already grown to a point where it's different than what I'm thinking of when I think of internet. Um, so we have to leap forward and, and say, okay, what is this internet like? Now, there was a fad of having chat rooms be physical rooms walk up and see the person there and have to talk to them as if they were that icon or whatever you call it. And I don't know if people even do that because that was, that was in the days of bulletin boards that they were talking about doing that and then immediately was the fear about children and So that, it, d does that take place? Do people have chat rooms, like physical rooms, but with uh, avatars and so forth? Do people do that? Or does that just not catch on? Well, there's a whole ritual in the world to game online. Yeah, that's true. Player online. That's true, I've seen that. <laughs> you either talk to somebody and have three words said to you and decide that you don't want to talk to them anymore or you kill them. That's pretty much it. So that wouldn't be it. But there are games I know that people have a lot to say to different characters and well, they get on the microphone. They have their headset. Yeah. Guilds. Someone who's part of the guild, and then I watch the guild. It's very funny. The, the, tele, the internet television show. The very short episodes, but if you watch it on Netflix, you can watch the whole season in an hour and a half or however long. 
put together and it's very funny. She's part of the guild. The main character. Anyway, okay, so you have virtual worlds and I could imagine I could imagine building things like maybe a maze and the maze had a point of some kind where you could go through a series of ideas and come to a conclusion or, or something interesting, you know, that came about as a participant physically navigating in a maze. Um, something that might be hard to describe or, you know, to show you the, what's interesting about it, this idea of flow or something, you know, you, you could have something that I built. It's an experience, like an amusement ride or something, mm -hmm. more intellectual. And I build that. It ultimately is, is just commands. And so you go through these rules and, and to you, you're turning left or right. So you come up on this, like la di da di da kind of like when we do surfing and you end up somewhere you didn't intend to go and it was interesting. So you could come into my space that I have built something interesting and be there for a while. And then that becomes part of your I mean, that kind of internet is completely, totally different. That's that's something that I'm thinking of as uh, interactive, like a virtual world. So, what what's a what do you think of when you think of a internet? When you say four, you know, four D. Customize, lead you to an experience? Uh, algorithms trying to guide you into what you might be interested in? Yeah. Yeah. And it also, and it simultaneously, I'll put in something that other people will take as something like that. Okay. Okay. okay, this is sounding a lot like. had a station since about 2001. I haven't 
changes. KMRY. <laughs> anyway, KMRY has a couple of Johnny Cash songs, a whole bunch of corn, and some Depeche Mode and Duran Duran. Gansey. It just makes no sense whatsoever, except for the fact that I have very strong opinions of what I don't like. And aside from Waylon Jennings, you know, there's just not going to be a lot of country music after that one. So I'm constantly going, it, it asks me, you know, because I have like two country music people that will ask me over and over. Finally, it's quit asking me. The only thing it ever tries to play is uh, Waylon Jennings or... Cash, if you can call Johnny Cash country, I don't know, sometimes. But, so it's gotten the hint, finally. Okay, this girl is really specific on that. Then it'll play a bunch from, you know, like it'll play a bunch of Slipknot and Corn and some Harder Edge stuff in a row, and then it'll stop, and it'll play a bunch of Peshmodi, Durand, or any stuff for a while. And then it'll go back to... So it doesn't even try to put them all together and try to figure out what's in between. Hmm. You know? Nickelback? It doesn't. It just... <laughs> that's almost a joke. Um, it, it, uh, it tries to... You know, it did it first. And then it, somehow it learned that, no, I don't want you to try to find out what is most like both Slipknot and Johnny Cash. It stopped trying to find that. And it, it, so anyway, this, this thing has some artificial intelligence and it's very, very good now at picking out music I would like, despite the fact that I have made one station out of all of these things. It's easier to make a station when you don't mix apples and oranges like I have. But the fact that it has any clue at all what I like to listen to, and you know, it really does. So it's constantly, you know, by my thumbs up or thumbs down. TiVo does the same thing, but not as well. I remember that was exciting. I have TiVo to thank for having a dog at all. So that was, you know, he's 13 now, and I got him when he was two, almost 13, July 7th. So, yeah, I mean, I was playing with this stuff. I was fascinated by it. For some reason, it just made me watch Breed All About It, which is about a different dog breed every day. I don't know why. I watched Animal Planet like one time, and then I got hooked on Breed All About It because Tiva was filling up space and making suggestions, and I ended up getting a dog. <laughs> so it really, <laughs> TiVo basically, you know, responsible for my family member. So, okay, you, uh, you're you talking about a music genome project. You're talking about a, an entire web sort of thing. So, so that's what this is about. This is about the internet trying to find out what you like and then for you to have what you want to experience basically coming on to your screen and then when you do appreciate whatever it is share that with others and so
So what would happen to us if we were doing that? Because that seems like it would actually shape. I, I think I'm getting why that would actually have an effect. But I mean, you're, why would having this? Uh, why would it help to have a bunch of folks sharing um, their playlists or their custom-made, you know, I'll just say their internet genome project and they're sharing with one another. Um, yeah, I would probably, you know, maybe I would appreciate your politics but not your me a little bit of the feather circle concept of you start by finding what you have in common and then the conversation goes from there from that starting point as opposed to trying to force an agreement on something so we would we would be accelerating our conversation in, in a direction naturally if we were in the habit of continually sharing what we like or what we think is worth knowing or experiencing. It's a way of trying to encompass all the stuff we already do on computers. But how does it how do we automate the process by which something something you might want to do explore curious as an option. What do we do on computers that you're thinking of? Pop in and out of this. Um, well, what are the control the machinery? I'm not going to have it replace the fact that I need an alarm clock every day and my computer does that for me. Or set up a meeting or something that I have to have. But it could replace that by how do you do an alarm on a computer? Do you set an alarm on a computer? I have set appointment reminders on my computer when I was at work.
No, just having, um, like, I don't know if it's iGoogle or who, who does it, but they have a, the custom screen, start screen, where you have various websites always visible in thumbnails. And that's a, a rather small thumbnail, lots of empty space. You could have a very large screen with many things going on there. And uh, I assume by then they're all touchpad. I don't know how the, I mean, by then, X amount of time. It won't be long before, instead of a keyboard, we have just our fingers. I mean, that's, I would not expect. On the screen. Well, I, I wouldn't even expect that. I would expect them um, to be able to just have a sensor on our fingers. It would be relatively easy to type without actually having to have a keyboard. And I'm sure typing, I mean, already my swipe, you know, you know, swipe, S-W-Y-P-E with the keyboard on, on this thing. It's pretty amazing because it, it knows you know, that I probably meant, you know, wolf, not, wold, you know, even though I may not have made it clear to the F when I'm just drawing on this fake keyboard on that screen, you know, it, 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 it figures it out, and that could, it could get better and better, I mean, the more words you add, and more complicated the programming got, well, what you really meant is probably going to be more accurate. So, you know, I mean, a little bit of, a little bit of technology, and we get rid of all those keyboards forever. We're almost there. So, and I imagine a big screen, decent screen, and uh, not long in the future will be just only projection and not actually having to touch, but actually just moving your hand. I mean, that, those things are all really close. So... An entire virtual simulation. Really? We weren't already talking about that. But... I wasn't thinking that far. I was thinking only visual and maybe just the fact that you wouldn't have to have any physical uh, keyboard or screen. You could have a projection and some sensors and be good. But mm -hmm. you're talking about more senses. G-O-D-D. Yeah. I remember that. God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Direct democracy. I'm assuming if you um, uh, don't happen on the kind of interfaces we have already, and uh, Software is changing. I'm still using a computer. I'm still using a laptop, maybe or uh, that thing. Uh, right. I'm still overwhelmed by my new phone, whatever it is. Um, okay, so G G O D D is what? Because you said to me direct democracy, graphical. Global. Global. So, what do you mean direct democracy? Why do you put that in there? Oh. Um, well, it would, we'd be replacing, we'd be, we would be good. And, uh, compass, and functions, at least, so 
open source man, uh, management. Crowdsource? We're even filming still. We are. But it is warning me about my... It is warning me about my... <laughs> my battery, so if we go suddenly out, then I will... Oh! Before we go, we're going to have to show off my phone... Uh, boot. My phone boot monsters, which I will use to charge it one more time and come back in two hours, so, anyway, we've been on almost two hours. Remember when you were going to go home? You remember saying that? <laughs> and I'll just tell me real quick about know, graphical global online direct democracy, and, um, no. <laughs> It took me that long to figure out that you were talking about having a computer help you, lead you with your own choices to what you would have on your screen and then share and have some kind of learning AI kind of thing like you do with Pandora. That, that took a long time to figure that out. I, I told you I was missing something very basic. And, and actually, I have to say that when you jump into your blog, blogs are not written so that the most basic information is at the top. It's written by date, the most recent. So I'm not used to reading blogs. I'm used to reading a website from the top down and the most relevant down and, and also clicking to find more detail. So I'm, I'm not a good blog reader. So when I was reading, not. By the time I got to the GGODD thing, I was like, I give up. Okay, so what is the de direct democracy? You said uh, you said this word I didn't know. Crowdsource politics or something. What, what's crowdsource? So, um, like I could say, I need this information, could you guys look it up and then uh, get back to me, and then we'll continue our conversation so that I don't have to stop and go look it up. Delegating an entire function or something? 